if you can hear me, can you just turn the mic down a little? There you go. Better? <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to this service of worship this afternoon, this blue Christmas service. I'm Kim Wadlington and I'm the pastor here at this point. Soon I'll be one of the pastors here, but right now I'm the pastor here. Uh, presiding with me is Anne Ross. She's uh, one of our uh, pastor members in the congregation. And also uh, Ellen Hunt, who is our music, uh, music of, minister of music emeritus. There we go. <laughs> So thank you to all of you for being here and thank you to you for joining in this time of quiet and contemplation in what can sometimes be a really busy season. I want you to feel the freedom to do whatever you want to do during this service, to sit, to go if you feel you need to, to join together with someone else in a pew if you feel called to do that. Um, this is your time and space to have a different way of marking this season. We, in uh, we intend to have lots of space to breathe. We intend to have silence. We will be lighting the Advent candles, but we will be offering different significance to them as we go through. During the candle lighting, there will be times that we will pray together and we will lead you into that by saying, let us pray together. So don't worry, you'll know when you're supposed to join in. Let's take a deep breath and center ourselves, and then we'll begin with our call to worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. On those who live in a land of deep shadow, a light has shone. For the yoke that was weighing upon them and the burden upon their shoulders, you have broken in pieces, O God our Redeemer. Let us pray together. God of mercy, hear our prayer in this Advent season for ourselves and for all who live with painful thoughts and memories. We ask for strength for today, courage for tomorrow, and peace for the past. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who shares our life in joy and sorrow, death and new birth, despair and promise. Amen.
The first candle we light to remember those persons whom we have loved and lost. We pause to remember their name, their voice, their face, the memory that binds them to us in this season. We hold them before God, giving thanks for their lives in ours. Please take a moment to remember those who have died. I invite you to name them, either aloud or in the silence of your hearts. I pray, O oh, oh Lord, each of us takes our loved one by the hand and leads them to you, the God of love. Here we present them to you. Accept our love and thanksgiving as we entrust them to your loving care. We want our loved ones to be free at home with you. We ask that you save a place for us beside them. We ask that you fill us with motivation and energy in the days ahead when we feel like giving up. Remind us often of our true homeland when we are caught up in the desolation of the journey. Help us to find joy in the people, events, and the beauty of nature which surrounds us. And together now, let us pray. Thank you for the gift each of these people has been in our lives. We want to believe that we will celebrate the treasure of love with them again when we are all in your presence forever. May this truth sustain us in the days to come. Take our sad and aching hearts and comfort us. Fill the hollow and empty spaces within us. God of sorrowing, draw near. Amen. The second candle we light is to redeem the pain of loss, the loss of relationships, the loss of jobs with the security they bring, the loss of health in ourselves or in family members, the loss of joy and peace in our lives from the stresses which surround us, the loss and loneliness we experience when our loved ones do not share our faith. As we gather up the pain of the past, we offer it to you, O God, asking that into our open hands you will place the gift of peace. Please take a moment to remember the losses. I invite you to name them aloud or in the silence of your hearts. God of mystery, we turn our hearts to you. We come before you in need of peace, grateful for the mystery of life and ever keenly aware of your promises of guidance and protection. We want to place our trust in you, 
but our hearts grow fearful and anxious. We forget so easily that you will be with us in all that we experience. And we pray together. Lord of all, teach us to be patient with the transformation of our lives and to be open to the changes which we are now going through. Enable courage and strength to flow into us for all that we face. Amen. The third candle we light for those who experience a loss of direction in their lives. God of the Exodus, you led Moses and your people through the wilderness to a new land. Hear our prayer. We want so much to have a sense of direction, to know where we are and where we ought to be headed. But the darkness and the questions stay. You ask us to be full of faith, to believe deep within that you are our signpost, that you are our wisdom and our guide, and to trust in your presence. Your words to us are clear. Do not fear. I go before you. Oh God, Help us to trust that you dwell with us in deep darkness. Help us to trust that when there seems no clear way ahead, you make a way. When it seems impossible for light to shine again, remind us that dawn always follows the night. Let us pray together. God of our depths, we cry out to you to be our guide. Help us to have a strong sense of inner direction and grant that we may have the reassurance of knowing that we are on the right path. Take our lives and use them according to your will. Take all that is lost in us and bring it home with you. Amen. The fourth candle we light as a sign of hope, the hope that the Christmas story offers to us. We remember that God who shares our life promises us a place and time of no more pain and suffering. Take this time to breathe in the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ.
O oh God, whose spirit is known by those who carry gratitude in their hearts, lift up our hearts, we pray, to a joy, joyous confidence in your care. Guide us when we cannot see the way. Teach us to know that a shadow is only a shadow because the light of eternal goodness shines behind the object of our fears. And we pray together. Where there is love in life, teach us to find it. Help us to trust it and enable us to grow in the power of love. So may our lives bring comfort and encouragement to others. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, whose life is our light. Amen. reading from the Old Testament from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 and verses 25 to 31. Hear now the word of God speaking to us. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. To whom then will you compare me, and who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And in the Gospel according to Matthew, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. I have always understood intellectually the need for a service such as this in this time of the year. This time of the year when our shopping malls are filled with things for people to purchase and Christmas carols began on the radio, I think shortly before Halloween, I've always understood intellectually the need. Many of you know that 
the need for a blue Christmas service is hitting a lot closer to home for me right now as well. If you're not aware, 13 days ago, my mother was diagnosed with a terminal illness. And since then, we have had our world turned upside down. And I imagine that many of you are here also because you feel and know that at some point your life was turned upside down. And just because I've experienced that recently does not mean that I know how you are feeling about the grief or the loss that you have suffered, nor does it mean that you know how I am feeling. And we all know those well-meaning people who come and say, I understand exactly what you're going through. And you think to yourself, no, you don't, but, but thank you. We can say thank you on our best days. Each of us experiences grief in a unique way because we are each unique people and none of our situations are the same. But I imagine that you're here today because people who have experienced grief or who live with sorrow, who have experienced loss, resonate with one another in a deeper way. And as I thought about what that looks like, the image of a tuning fork came to me. If you know what a tuning fork is, you smack it on something and it makes a clear tone. And if you have two tuning forks near one another, when you hit one and it begins to resonate in this clear tone, the other one, if it's the same, will also begin to resonate, even though you haven't hit it on anything. And I think people who have experienced grief share that in common. There's a resonance between us, and we recognize that in one another even though we don't understand exactly how each other feels. It's a way of acknowledging on a deeper level what's going on. When I think about grief, for me, it, it, I'll, I'll just tell you how it feels to me and you can see if it resonates with you. For me, it's been like a re, at first I thought it was like a reshaping of reality, like a new reality. I'm in the same places and I'm seeing the same faces, but there's just something different that I can't name. And now I realize that perhaps I'm seeing, seeing things anew with, with more clarity. It's like moving from head to heart. It's like recognizing on a deeper level what it's like to live in this mortal world. What it's like to know that life is precious and fragile. It's with our hearts that we understand the ache of loss. And it's with our hearts that we experience longing. And sometimes lately it's felt like I'm in a cloud, but not always. And when the cloud lifts, things are still different. And sometimes I am experiencing a new sense of clarity. Like I'm finally seeing things the way I'm supposed to see them. I put together a caring bridge page for my family and maybe some of you who have been through experiences like that, like this, uh, have done the same. And when I go to the caring bridge page, there's a picture of my parents that we put there. And when you open the page, the picture's blurry. And then all of a sudden it crystallizes and it becomes clear. And that's kind of what I feel like this is experience is like. I can see through the clutter of life to the things that are most important. And it's not easy and it hurts, 
but I'm, I'm seeing more clearly the love that my parents have for one another and the joy that they have in life, even given the sorrow they've entered. And I'm able to discern what's most important more easily. I hope that resonates with you. The resonance and the understanding and the clarity that sorrow brings is the resonance of the season of Advent. Because in Advent, we're here to acknowledge that we are still waiting for the fulfillment of the promises that God has made to us. And it's a, a time for us to gather and, and remember not only that the world is not as God intends for it to be ultimately in the end, but to remind one another that that will happen, that God has promised it will be so, and to encourage one another to wait, to experience the longing and the sorrow, but to wait with hope and joy when we can, and with peace, and with love for one another. When Mary and Joseph bring the infant Jesus into the temple and Simeon sees them, if you know the story, Simeon has been told by the Holy Spirit that he will not die until he sees the Messiah. And I believe that Simeon knew what grief was and that the Christ child resonated with whatever was within him that was filled with sorrow and joy all at the same time. And Simeon goes to Mary and Joseph and he takes the baby in his arm and he says, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples. And Mary and Joseph are amazed and Simeon looks at them and blesses them and then says, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. And I believe that was Simeon's reminder to Mary and Joseph, that the joy of the moment, the joy of this child and all of the promise contained in him would also forever be commingled with sorrow, especially for those who love him, because that, that is the way of this world. People always ask the question, why does it take tragedy or loss to help us understand the important things? And that's because wisdom comes from lived experience. And you all know this, and I'm learning it anew. Grief is going to come to all of us. but those who are willing to embrace it, walk with Christ in a particular way, the way of commingled joy and sorrow. And the good news of this season is just that, that Jesus will continue to walk with us through our grief, and he will carry us when he needs to and when we need him to. And when we allow ourselves to be open to sharing his life of love and grief, that's a taking on of his yoke. The sorrow that is commingled with joy. And it opens up for us, dare I say, the gifts of grief, love and clarity and even joy in what God is doing for us and through us. And I pray that in this season, each of you will find people to walk with 
Each of you will have the sure and certain assurance of Christ's presence with you. And each of you will continue to be willing to embrace the longing and the joy commingled forever. Amen. In this time of meditative music, you are welcome to come forward and light a candle of remembrance. We have candles here for you to light and then leave in the sand. 
Anne and I will be near each of the Christmas trees and you are welcome to come to us for a time of prayer and if you wish anointing. You are also welcome to simply stay in your pew. Each of you received when you came in a bottle that's intended to represent a bottle of tears. And if you would simply like to sit and meditate with that, you are welcome to do that as well. This is your time.
as we leave this evening. Know that we claim and embrace the darkness that is in the world and is in ourselves. Let us remind ourselves that the Christ ch child came into the world to illumine our hearts. May we, we remember that that light that is in the world now is here to give us peace and comfort and light and joy. May the hope of the Christ child sustain us in the darkness.